The gameplay is so tight, the flow of action so smooth, the quality of life features are so on point. Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom is without a doubt the sharpest honed of the Impression City Builder games. There is no time wasting or frustration to be found, and I look for them, because city builders are perfect environment for such frustrating mechanics to exist. I mean, let's be honest, city builders are simply illustrated and gamified spreadsheets. We're basically doing accounting for fun. Oh, break evens? Those are really fun, yeah. But does any of that make this a classic? Let's start with the tutorial, which is possibly the best of the entire series. It not only illustrates each and every step with image examples and describes why it is necessary, but it also goes into detail and offers some troubleshooting for possible issues you may have during the process in case you haven't followed the illustrated examples. I know Zeus and Pharaoh had similar tutorials, but I can't put my finger on why Emperors felt the smoothest. It might turn out to be some subtle difference in approach, or it might be that after playing all of the Impressions games in order, I've accrued some sort of institutional knowledge which made it all considerably easier to absorb. Even though I enjoyed Zeus and Poseidon quite a lot, for whatever reason, Emperor is much more visually pleasing, or at least much more pleasing to my eye. This might have to do with the realistic design of buildings and color palette. I appreciated the exaggerated cartoony look of Zeus, but ancient China is simply easier on the eye than ancient Greece is. This might be simply a subjective thing, but I much prefer it. By the way, the footage you see in this video is recorded using a high res mod. The game is still pretty to look at in its original resolution, however, it will most likely be stretched because we tend to have exclusively wide screens nowadays. So, just like with all the past Impression City Builders, seek out the high res mod to get these visual results. And since I tend to spotlight certain fun or funny citizen animations, Ember also has a couple of interesting ones. The first one would be the Tax Collector, who is literally flipping a coin in the air. That's all the dude does. But the Acupuncturist is the one that takes the cake, and I'm not gonna do it the disservice of describing it. I'll just let the animation loop run for the length of this entire phrase. Playing the game truly does make it seem like the developers were pulling on the experience and gameplay choices from the past titles. Emperor taking all the best features and ideas from the previous titles and dressing them up in the theme of ancient China. Other than the visual aesthetics, there are several other gameplay particularities that are part of the Chinese theme, the ones that most jump to my mind being the hyper useful walls and the thematically appropriate feng shui mechanic. You need to use the walls in order to physically separate your neighborhoods from the production and distribution buildings that cater to them, because walls block bad desirability. It is true that this idea existed in Zeus as well, but it feels better implemented in Emperor because you can control the types of walkers that can move through the wall gate in a more granular way than you can with a roadblock. Likewise, the idea of walls and China tend to work very well together as far as general popular awareness goes. Be they the traditional brick and mortar or fire variety. Also, you get four different colors of walls, each of them with their own type of gate, my favorite being the gray gate, I don't think the color of the walls influences Feng Shui, but it might. And since I brought it up, Feng Shui is a very thematic mechanic layered on top of the usual desirability mechanic. Feng Shui is about organizing and placing your buildings in areas where they will be in harmony with the various elements of nature. But each building will have different Feng Shui requirements to make it harmonious, and sometimes you'll simply just not be able to build things in a harmonious place and your people and gods will just have to live with that. It is really important, however, to do your best and place as many buildings in places with good feng shui, because the lower your city's rating will mean your population will be less happy and your sacrifices to the gods will be less efficient as well. So, when you have a yellow building, take your time and move it around a bit till you see where it turns green. In some cases, it won't turn green because its requirements aren't met anywhere and sometimes it will turn green in a very inefficient spot. The buildings you will have the most problems with will be the warehouses, since you need warehouses at every level of the game. You'll discover that they only turn green when placed around already existing giant rocks on the map. 
there are several buildings that respawn to rocks around them, and then there are some that need natural trees around them. Play around and see what can be done. On the normal level of difficulty, Feng Shui isn't crucial to your success, but I have the feeling it is more important on higher levels of difficulty. On an unrelated side note, the existence and relatively palpable effect of Feng Shui in this game reminded me of Shadowrun Hong Kong, which I covered a while back, and how real Feng Shui is in that game. Anyway, back to Emperor now. Farms also work a bit different in Emperor, because they can tend to several crops at the same time, thus allowing you to have a constant supply of some type of food and keeping your population busy at the same time. Well, technically that can happen and is useful when growing land is limited, however, you will still generally want to dedicate each farm to one type of crop. Another important thing relating to crops is that each of them has a particular growing season and you can use this to your advantage when you're short on workers, because you can shut down farms outside of their growing season and use those workers for other useful purposes. Spying Spying makes for a very clear-cut method of knowing what a foreign city needs in order to begin a relationship. Training spies costs money though, so better send them to gather information at the start of a mission. You or your guards will oftentimes find spies from other cities within your walls. It is funniest when you find them accidentally by clicking on a garden square or when you notice a certain type of walker in an area where they shouldn't be. They're easiest to see however when their cover just gets blown for whatever reason and they just rotate in place like a compass near a strong magnetic field. The world map seems to do more than in previous titles. Besides showing the types of trade routes you have with the other cities, as well as the supplies they sell and buy, you can also view troop movements as well as which city has a spy in it and the number of troops they have stationed there. I need to mention how you cannot use the map when employing the high resolution mod, but somehow, thankfully, the buttons on the UI work and you can choose through the various cities using the buttons. It's a wonderful example of how maybe sometimes it's good to have several ways of doing the same thing in a video game. Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom also introduced a multiplayer option for the first time in the city builder games and that is the one feature I did not test because on the one hand I'm not a big fan of playing with people I don't know and on the other hand I doubt the servers are still live 20 years later. The gods are such a different experience from past titles, especially from the gods of Caesar and Pharaoh, who would actively fuck you up if you didn't pay their protection tax. Emperor does the same thing that Zeus did, allowing the gods to physically show up in your city when you appease them. Which, I have to say, doesn't make as much sense as it did in Zeus. But once they're there, they offer various services and you can have them bless different buildings to improve their output. Granted. These gods will also enact terrible vengeance upon your city if you neglect them for too long, like I did on this occasion. To avoid that happening, I suggest you keep the religion tab open at all times to see when the last offering took place. Time tends to pass real quick when you're on 100% speed. As you play through the many campaigns, you will traverse various stages of history, which will mean you will gain access to different and more advanced buildings and technology as you go through them. And likewise, you get to see how the religious beliefs developed and changed as time went on, starting with the most basic ancestor worship, to later go into Taoism, Confucianism and Buddhism. While Emperor is very mechanically sound, it could have still had some improvements. For one, I would have liked the ability of setting reminders for various stuff, such as the time of year in relation to crops or even more importantly, reminders each month for god offerings because you can only make offerings to one god each month and if you want to keep them constantly happy you need to stay on top of that schedule which can sometimes be difficult because you're too absorbed with solving other logistic issues or doing some wider map thinking and the gods simply slip from your mind and now for some quick beginner tips the mill needs to store as many different types of foodstuffs as you have because the food shoppers seem to only visit one mill for their supplies. In order to get everything you are producing, make sure to switch accept to get, especially if some of the things are really far away. Play around with the accept and get options for your warehouses as well. For instance, when you import things, you will need to move them to a warehouse first before they can be used by whatever production building needs them. 
When facing a worker shortage, building new houses is almost never the answer. What you most likely have to do is upgrade the houses you already have to as high a level as the mission will allow. Only once they are fully upgraded and populated can you build new ones. Depending on the situation, you can increase salaries to get a small boost of workers that can work as a great stopgap. Desirability has never been easier to massage than in Emperor. Make ample use of walls, gardens and statues when you have to increase desirability, especially for the rich people houses. Ideally, leave two spaces in between them in case you need to place some large statues there and such. So now come up a question, what maketh a video game a classic? Some would say it's subjective, some would say it depends, and there is definitely something to be said about subjective classics, which is something I talk about in this series as well. But in order for a game to be an objective classic, it has to be considered to be good over a period of time, has to be remembered as such, and also it has to stand up to current day scrutiny. And I also consider that 10 years is the minimum period required for such a hindsight based judgment to take place. In this case, it's been 20, so we're fine in that respect. Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom was released as city building games were fading out of the gaming zeitgeist, with most of the mainstream gaming industry going heavily into 3D graphics and towards more action. The reviews at the time were mostly positive, but they tended to note how little the game differed from past impressions titles. And technically, objectively, it's a very valid critique. It only features very small improvements over Zeus, but I have also played these games two years apart as they were initially released. But what I uniquely have and reviewers didn't have 20 years ago because they literally couldn't, is the benefit of hindsight. When you're aware this was the final impression city builder game, it recontextualizes it. We look at it differently now with this knowledge. Does having this historic perspective somehow make Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom that much better than the other games? No. What it does is it makes it clear. This is the culmination of everything that came before. It is peak Impressions games. Even though technically it wasn't made by Impressions. In as far as the city building playing community and especially Impressions games fans is concerned, Emperor is generally appreciated for everything I've talked about in this video but for most players it is not their favorite of the series. That place of honor is generally occupied by Caesar 3 or Pharaoh and generally because those are the ones people started with and spent the most time with. And that is totally fine and a perfectly valid reason. But having just played through all of them in order, I can say that Emperor Rise of the Middle Kingdom has become my favorite Impression City Builder game and a definite subjective classic, although I would consider it objectively one as well. And if you want to see the rest of my Impression City Builder videos, check out the playlist on screen. Thank you very much for watching, I've been Steven Nonsense, I have a Patreon, have a great rest of your day and I'll see you in my next video.